Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. Just listening to the radio, so National Public Radio. Uh, they're talking about the exchange of hostages and prisoners between uh, Israel and Hamas and Palestine by association there. Um, uh, just horrible. Just Oh my God, you think it's all good news. They're being exchanged, but some of these people don't know their families are dead from the attack. Uh, and then some of them had to leave their husbands and brothers and, and fathers um, in, uh, in Gaza when they were released. Uh, so it's like, how do, you, how do you leave your husband? Well, I guess if you have a kid, you go, right? But uh, it's just just a horror story. How just awful, awful, awful. But um, and then they're talking about Trump running for office and he wants to get rid of Obamacare. I just it's just crazy town. But um, so hi. Oh, my day has been very productive today. It has been very good. I left the house early this afternoon. Um, I had to drop off a box at, at uh, the post office. I sold a coffee mug that I bought for a buck. I bought for a dollar. I sold it for $38. Very excited about that. So I had to drop that off at the post office. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a P.O. box. Well, I have a P.O. box, I'm sorry, is what I meant to say. Many of you know because you send me cards and letters and things. Well, it's where I also have things from Amazon delivered uh, because I can't always trust that someone's not going to steal my package from the front of my house. It has happened. Um, so um, the options I have are sometimes limited uh, because uh, they won't deliver to a P.O. box if it's like an external battery or something expensive. Um, they want it delivered to an address. Uh, so I've been hesitant to ever order anything nice, but apparently, I didn't know this was the thing, you can have things delivered to Whole Foods. Who knew? They own Whole Foods, so they have these little kiosks. I walked in, I bought a pair of Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, whatever that's called. Uh, and um, so they were originally $230. Uh, I got them for $159 plus. Uh, I got a $10 uh, Amazon gift card. So I uh, ordered those things. I walked into to Whole Foods, showed them a code, they handed me a box. Oh my God, it was amazing. So setting up these earbuds, super easy if you're a Samsung person. Uh, and then um, I put them in and I tried the noise canceling headphones thing. That's magic. It is magic. I mean, I was blown, <laughs> blown away. Um, I uh, put them in, you know, set it all up, and I, I turned the noise canceling off, and the world around me erupted into sound. Just crazy. But uh, so I picked up those, set those up. I'm super excited about it. Um, I passed by a Goodwill, two of them, uh, and I found a couple things. If I think about it, I'll show you. Oh, I will show you one thing. A Kangol hat that I really like a lot, $4. This hat, which obviously, um, that was two fifty. And what else did I find? Oh, this. I hope they work. <laughs> it's they're frogs. They're frogs that are electronic that go rivet, rivet, but then they go into harmonizing into a Christmas carol, which I think is hysterical. It was like a dollar ninety nine or something. So I was like, what the heck? I'll try it out. Um, what else is going on? So I stopped at Goodwill. I got some glass. I have become an accidental um, collector of Blanco glass. And I found some really nice, kind of rare, I think, pieces of glass. So I'll show you those later on. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, and now I have to buy some groceries because I have a four-day trip starting tonight. I'm going to be staying tonight and tomorrow night in Columbus. And I think I'm in Charleston, my next layover. But um, neither options really have great food uh, around them, so I have to do that. So five minutes of your life has been spent listening to me talk about my monologue here. I'm so sorry. Um, let me talk to you soon. All right, see you later. All right, I'm about to go into Sprouts over there, but I had to look up and look at these colors. This is no filter. This is just 
the Southwest, the beauty of the sky in the Southwest, it looks like a Maxwell Parish painting. You have to look past the street lights and the, the buildings and such, but isn't that just gorgeous? <sighs> oh, beautiful. Ooh, I am speed walking through the airport, but there's no people in front of me to get in my way. All right, so I speed walked to the airport having this like oh, panic attack. Like I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I'm not late. I have an hour to get from where I was to the gate. Um, so plenty of time. I did not eat dinner at home because I was laying in bed with the cats. Um, I didn't really sleep, but the cats both wanted attention. Buddy is taken to being on my right hand side, Eleanor to my left. Uh, forcing me to lay on my back, which is not something I do often, which sounds like a joke. I'm going to leave that right there. Uh, but I, I lay, lay in bed on my back with my arms kind of stretched out, trying to embrace both cats, scratching, you know. And anytime I was going to kind of drowse off, Buddy goes, which, which meant scratch my head or something like that. Uh, so I lay in bed longer than I was supposed to. Um, driving to the airport just getting to the parking area and I realized I can't find my parking pass. So I pull off to the side and um, I start scrambling through my car, which is a mess. Digging through, digging through, digging through, could not find it. It was under my driver's seat of all places. But I was getting like, oh my God, like <laughs> in a panic, I'm gonna have to park like a, a passenger and pay out the nose uh, for parking during this trip. But I found it. <sighs> But I got a great parking spot to make up for that time. So uh, I am stopping off at Wendy's for a quick bite because I did not plan my day correctly. I got a lot done, but I didn't eat. Um, and then we're flying off to Columbus. Hey, Dave. Um, where there, <laughs> Steve right there. Um, where there is apparently like huge snowstorms. Yay. All right. I'll see you later or in Columbus. Don't be fresh. Hi, Inc. Uh, co-worker of mine who knows I YouTube was like, get to work on the PA system. Um, hi, so just at my safety checks, we've got over 30 some odd open seats on this flight today. So we're gonna have the back row open, which is good. Um, let's see, I am flying position C on this trip. I usually fly lead, but Inc. is senior to me and he really enjoys the position as much as I do. So he's flying lead. Um, we have recorded announcements, thank goodness. So I don't have to read the safety demo. Uh, so Inc. is gonna play all the announcements. All I have to do is sit there and look cute or sit there and look middle-aged and furry. Um, <clears throat> let's see, um, this trip is gonna be a long one. It's worth 19 and a half hours credit. Uh, day one, one leg. Day two, layover. Day three, four legs, shoot me. And then day, uh, day four, we have three legs. So it's it's gonna be a lot of work this trip. But I'm with uh, Inc. I don't know uh, Michaela uh, at all, my uh, ch my um, position B in the back, but we're gonna get to know each other on this trip. Um, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it for now. I will, oh, I was super sassy when I was getting through security. Um, I got through KCM, I didn't get random. Um, but I was passing by a pilot and I said, hey, how are you? And he just walked right past me and I went, you too. Super sassy, super sassy. Are we? Oh, good, 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 good. We, we have the back row to ourselves. That's very nice. All right, so I will see you in Columbus. Hey there, hi. So I made it to my room here in Columbus. I'm not quite sure why I'm so desperate to get these curtains open to see a parking lot. Uh, it is 18 degrees here. Thankfully, it's not snowing. Um, our oh, it's too cold. It's too cold. But the room was too warm when I got in here. Some fool had it set at 76 degrees. What's going on? So I turned it down to 69. Still tropical compared to 18 degrees outside. Um, our flight tonight was fine easy. Uh, we have the back row open, which is great, especially for position B. On my airline with our configuration, flight attendant B 
sits in a jump seat that's facing a lavatory door like this. Uh, and so, you know, anytime someone gets up, especially with the seatbelt sign being on, um, she has to get up out of her jump seat and then put herself at risk, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, she's able to at least sit in uh, the back row so that she's not always being endangered by other people's lack of ability to, to manage their own need to pee. Um, I'm judging people harshly right now because I'm tired. Um, the crew room here is small, but it's got some little mini bagels, some muffins that we sell on the plane, coffee, water, things like that. Uh, the room, you've, I've been here before. No big shakes. They all, they all end up looking the same uh, in the end. But uh, I'll tell you, my coat, nice and warm, but this, I bought this, I think, at Primark years ago. It's a, a snood? Is that what it's called? It's a scarf, but it's also a hood. And you can see it's got this like fake Sherpa inside, so it's super cozy. I use it as a little hat, sometimes a scarf. Clearly, I'm overtired because I'm talking about my snood. I'm going to let you go. I will see you tomorrow. Toodaloo. Hey guys, hi, it is brisk here in Columbus. I've got this sweater on, this shirt, and this jacket. I'm still kind of chilly. Uh, I am waiting for my Uber. It should be here momentarily. Uh, I'm going into uh, the Columbus Museum of Art. I love a good museum. And with a 28 hour layover, it would be a shame to not do something. Uh, it's too cold for me to go into Germantown and walk around and look at lights. It's just too cold for me. So um, I think a museum sounds like a perfect day. Um, I got to sleep this morning about 7.30, quarter of 8, and woke up at 12.30 uh, and uh, just had a little bite to eat. So it's so far so good in terms of time management for this layover. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the museum, although it closes at 5 o'clock. So I'm hoping um, it's not so large a museum. I feel like I'm missing out by just having maybe two, two and a half hours there, but blah, blah, blah. I will see you there. I can't find the entrance. Oh, here it is. It is a beautiful museum. Although a large part of it is closed for reinstallation. Looks like this was the original building here. Let's come inside. Oh, this is nice. I made a poor choice in my shoes. They're cute, but they're kind of loud. I hate loud shoes in museums, so I kind of have to tiptoe around. I hate when people wear like blah, 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 blah shoes. I have never seen this piece. This is a Norman Rockwell painting titled Morning After the Wedding. And, uh, <laughs> look at their faces. <laughs> the confetti in the dustpan, the rose that just married, the shoe that was probably tied in the back of the car. But even notice the cleaning equipment. Isn't that wild, the detail? I've seen so many uh, reproductions, but rarely a real painting. This is a Jackson Pollock from 1936 called Composition with Flames. You know, I'm really only familiar with his splatter work. I've really never seen this style of his work before. Beautiful. this. It's by Rockwell Kent back in 1909 called Men and Mountains. Look at the figures dancing. And this one celebrating the sun on his skin. Even the dog is wiggling on its back. Look at the energy of the dog wiggling. You can see it. And the little people in the background just wild. I love this. It's a beautiful building. Here's the uh, interior courtyard. Very pretty. There's a Chihuly over there on the corner. Over there.
This is quite a room. I love the color of the walls. It's like orchid. So pretty. I'm probably one of 10 people in this entire building. So I'm not sure why I'm whispering, but I don't want to piss off anybody. <laughs> Look at this angel. Look how beautiful this angel is. What a cutie. Wow. Well, look. So pretty. What's over here? Queer modern. Huh. Okay. Once an offensive slur, the word queer has been reclaimed as a way of resisting categorizations based on gender and sexuality. I still find the word queer offensive when it's used by straight people. <laughs> this piece really blew my mind. I mean, I identify completely with the feeling of standing out on the corner of that building and the wind whipping around. I just identify emotionally with this piece. But then I read the bit next to it. And uh, this quote here, which was ins the inspiration for this piece, we do at least, at last, see ourselves as we are, neither cozy nor playful, but swaying out on the ultimate wind-whipped cornice that overhangs the abiding void. We have never stood anywhere else. We have never stood anywhere else. I spent years standing on the imaginary cornice with the wind whipping around, not knowing where to go, what to do, and being frozen there. I mean, this piece really strikes my, hits me in the, in the soul here. What a wonderful piece. This is interesting. It's a picture of Edward Hopper. Uh, you know, if you know his work, his paintings, uh, they're very spare, spartan. There's no, it's just all about line, color, light. There's no, like, extraneous detail, you know. And it looks like in real life, apparently, it's the same way for him. There's just the basics. Heat, a structure to sit on, a place to hang his hat, you know. Um, kind of funny that his real life looks like his paintings. <laughs> This is a piece by John Singer Sargent. If you spend any time at the MFA in Boston, you'll be very familiar with his work. Um, I just think this is beautiful. She's gorgeous, but that it, the fur draped over her shoulder looks like chinchilla. It just looks so soft. But if you look at it up close, I mean, interesting. Just those few brush strokes can bring a fur to life. Just neat. And you can't have a day without some Monet, right? This is a piece called Weeping Willow, and you can obviously see it's a weeping willow. But imagine, as you get closer to this enormous canvas, could you try to imagine how, I mean, he had to step away from this painting probably hundreds or thousands of times. He took, put a little dab here and step away to feel how it impacted the movement. And it's just, it's a crazy, crazy piece of work. This piece is interesting to me. I walked up to it thinking, ugh, uh, this is not good. I do not, I do not like this. I don't appreciate it. I don't know if there's a story behind it, but it's just not appealing. If anything, I find it kind of repulsive. Um, from the eel uh, resting in the nest of seaweed to this crudely drawn sailboat and that little sort of sketch of houses. I don't know, is that a, is that a mountainside or a birch tree. I don't know what this is. And I'm like, ugh, I don't like it. It's by Matisse. Da -da. And then I think, maybe it's good because it's by Matisse. Makes me really think, do I value something because it's by Matisse or Renoir or, you know, just the last painting I showed you, like, is it good inherently or is it well done or do I appreciate it and like it or is it just that it's by a famous person eh. in this case it's not good this piece doesn't make me a fan either but uh, the reason I even stopped is I didn't see a woman I didn't see a figure until I saw that foot right there and then I'm like oh there's a person in there <laughs> 
This is another piece by Monet. Uh, and this brings me right back to that feeling I had, I think, in this video when I was standing in the parking lot in front of Sprouts, just gazing up at the sky in Las Vegas. It was just so beautiful and peaceful. And uh, this painting just brings me right back there. But he did it with such economy. Monet just used just a few brush strokes. Really economical movement here. And look at the clouds. Just a couple splotches and he pushes paint around. But you step back from it and it's just this peaceful, luminous scene. Just fantastic. Here's that Chihuly up close. Really fantastic. I particularly love this piece right here, this blue piece. I love that. It's wild. This sounds interesting. It's a video piece um, it, using artificial intelligence. She transformed photographs that she took driving across the country to make this piece. That sounds interesting. Let's go inside. Oh good, there's no one here. Have you ever had the opportunity to lay on your back surrounded by trees and looking up at the sky? It's a very different perspective. It's just haunting and can be quite beautiful. Um, but it, I've had that experience a few times while camping. And you try to look up at the sky and try not to see shapes. Just, just sort of embrace that moment, you know? That's what it was like sitting in that little quiet room for a few minutes. It almost felt like I was lying on my back in the woods looking up at the sky and just seeing and not trying to imagine anything, you know? Just, it was neat. That's pretty cool. And uh, this is magnificent um it is a piece of it's glass it makes me think of down crystal um and uh, it's got this satiny sort of soapy feel to it i can't touch this but i would love to isn't that gorgeous oh that's fantastic look at it's so like icy white but then you've got these little glimpses of that orchid that purple that lavender so pretty Oh, look at that. That's so gorgeous. Is this another video thing? What is this? <gasps> that startled me. How unusual. It's a giant barrel balanced seemingly on this rope. <laughs> and there's no, no explanation. There's no written text. You just have to figure out what you think this is. Oh my goodness, how unusual. <sighs> this is wild. You can't get an idea. You can't imagine how large this is. I could stand up easily and have room to spare uh, from just that opening there. That is wild. I wish I could touch it. <laughs> look at that. How interesting. And look at the texture of the rope. I mean, someone made this rope. That is I'm so glad I saw this after experiencing that. Um, this piece, uh, the grass is um, that made that rope is made of tall grass, a native plant to the prairie ecosystem in North America. Uh, it's gone by, mostly by 1930. Uh, and the wooden barrel is used to measure transport dry goods like grain, beans, and so on. Uh, and it is to this... Um, Massive weight suggests the precarious status of nature in a world outsized, of outsized human 
development, even the gallery walls, which curve inwards on all sides, seem to res- respond to the strain. I have to go back in there. Having read that, I have to see. See that one more time. Let's go back inside. I even love the doorway. See how thin it is at the, at the base? And then it gets wider at the top. I didn't notice that the walls are curved slightly. Okay. Huh. How interesting is seeing this having read that and then seeing it without having read that. Very, very different experience. That's wild. And amongst this museum, all this cool art, right? Open spaces. And then, what's that? It's a Lego man. <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with the construction of the new wing. Hmm. This has got to be the coolest museum gift shop I have ever seen. Look at the glass over there. I have to go look at that glass. But this is a super cool museum gift shop. Oh my goodness. Look at these. They're yoga army men. Oh my god, are you kidding? And wait till I show you what I'm buying. Oh my god, I almost started whimpering when I saw it. I'm so excited. The shop is so cute. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Still at the museum. And you can see I'm so classy. I just spit that. I'll get it. I'll take it. I'll pick that up. I've never had a Buckeye. And I figured it's a local thing, right? So I got a Buckeye. I spent six. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Mmm, that's very nice. Mmm, it's Reese's, but it's not. That's nice. Um, I spent $65. Oh, that's so good. $65 on a cat mobile. I'll show it to you maybe when I'm at home because they they put it back together and boxed it up. So I'll show you about $65 for a cat mobile. I'm an idiot. But when I saw it, I was literally whimpering. Oh my God, it's so cute. I'm gonna enjoy this and maybe see if there's something to see when I walk around here and then go back to the hotel and eat something. I'm starving. Here's the outside of the museum and that is the wing that was closed off. It's being uh, redone. So next time I'm here, I'll make it a point of coming back. Ooh, it is brisk. I'm gonna head in the direction of the uh, library because I think that would be an interesting thing to see. Oh, it is cold, but look at this. Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. That sounds hopeful. And look at these benches. I love that. Treatment works. Recovery happens. I love that. That's very inspiring. What a beautiful little park. This looks like something out of It's a Wonderful Life or something. How pretty. Even with the bare trees. Oh, it's so pretty. And the library is over there. Check that out, it's a cool looking building. No shoes, no shirt, no entry. All right. Wouldn't have you seen this many people in a library? This is wonderful. Look, they have a little cafe, a little gift shop. This is how you do a library. And what is this over here? It's like a model train or something. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look. The bridge is made out of twigs. And there's a train running through there. Look. Look. GPS signal lost. Oops. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Sounds like a cathedral. Charming. Look. Oh 
and there's a water fountain. There's a little waterfall right there under that castle. Look at the castle. That's fantastic. What a joy. This is another view, but look at the artwork. Hanger from the ceiling. What an amazing library. Oh my gosh. And it's so busy, there's people everywhere. This is wonderful. And the people are so nice. Um, I was just talking to this guy who works here and I said, oh my God, this is an amazing library. There's so much like activity. And he says, oh, it's, the, it's an open house. And he said something about having reindeer here. And I said, I'm not really into reindeer, bears, but not reindeer. And it took him a moment, but we both laughed. Yeah. Hey guys, good morning. So my last alarm just went off that says, leave the room now. So I'm leaving the room now. I had a very nice layover. I slept beautifully, ate well. I saw some nice art, that great library. And uh, relaxed in my hotel room very, very much. So I'm going to run downstairs, grab the shuttle to the airport. We're, oh, we have four legs today, don't we? have four legs today. <gasps> I'll see you at the airport. Hey guys, hi. So welcome to Fort Lauderdale. We're on the plane hiding from passengers. We had to change planes. So um, I didn't really chat with you much this morning, but um, we rushed to the airport in Columbus, got there super early. So I had time for coffee and a little bite to eat. Um, got on the plane, did my checks, and then we started boarding. And thank goodness I'm flying position C in the back because I don't have to handle anything really mid cabin because it was one of the most chaotic boarding processes I've ever seen. It was a mess. It was a mess. It was a mess. It seemed like every row had an issue or a problem. Thank goodness I didn't have to take part in any of it. So it was nice. Uh, but uh, the chaos kind of bled into the rest of the trip, uh, at least the first hour or so. There was just always something going on. Nothing really worth saying, but it was just a, a, the, in general, the energy and people getting up and the neediness and the entitlement. And it was weird because it's Columbus because they're always nice in Columbus. Um, but um, really good passengers. So for every grumpy one, there's a nice one. If you look, if you look, you have to look sometimes. Um, we had this really, really nice guy sitting in the last row right near me. Um, he's Egyptian. He's from Egypt. He's going to Boston College right now studying physics. I was looking at his laptop. Oh, pro tip, by the way, flight attendants always look at what you're watching on your phone and on your laptop. We just look, we just have to. It just, it's, we just have to. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at pictures on your phone, wink, wink. We know what you're looking at. Uh, but he was doing math. He was <laughs> solving some uh, arithmetic, I don't know. It, was, it looked like, it looked like wallpaper patterns to me. It was math, but it looked so crazy. So he's studying physics, uh, but he's Egyptian. He's from Egypt. And um, we had a really great conversation about Egypt and their position and what's going on in the world down, you know, in that part of the world, as you know, I'm, I'm watching it. Just really, really interesting conversation from a point of view that I, I, I did not understand or know. So it's nice to have uh, a little insight there. Um, and we had amazing babies on board, some really nice passengers, but uh, some some challenges too. Door in the jar and I can't get it to what? go back and get someone. Please help me when you have a chance. What? Thank you. Huh? Oh, hold on. All right, that was one of my coworkers just had a hard time getting a door closed in the bathroom. Uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, was I tell, did I tell you about the guy I was flirting with? Did I tell you that? I don't flirt because first, it's not professional. Second, no one's interested in this. No one is interested in me at all. I know, I know it's hard to believe, right? I know. Um, yeah, no, I have decades of proof that no one's interested in me. I mean, I have an ex-husband, but no one's really been interested in a very long time. Uh, and uh, that will continue, un unfortunately. But I think someone was flirting with me, and I think I was flirting back. I'm not good at it. Uh, but um, he commented on my beard, and everyone does, But uh, and I commented on his, and I, I think we were flirting. I don't know. But no one flirts with me because I look like this. I, 
There's one of you out there who's like, Steven, you're so handsome. You're wrong. <laughs> I have proof. Um, what else was I gonna tell you? I think that's it. Our next flight is one hour and 16 minutes. Uh, and I think uh, it's supposed to be really bumpy, so I doubt we're gonna be getting up much at all. So uh, yeah, that's it for now. I will see you later on, all right? <sighs> hey guys, hi. So welcome to Charleston. I think it's Charleston. Um, I knew it was a school group or a college group on board. I knew it was. I thought it was like a, a winter break or something, but it's a, it was a fraternity and a sorority uh, you know, a uh, trip they were going on, and uh, I'll tell you, it was unreal. And what was going on in the front? Poor, poor Ink. He's all by himself up in front with these people. Uh, and you know, I'm always saying how much I love my passengers. You know, every single video, I'm like, I love my passengers. And some of you must doubt what I'm saying because how could I love so many of my passengers and not complain about more of them? Today is solving that problem for me. Oh my God, today has been really, it's been like waterboarding. It's been torture. It's been torture. Um, the, the, there were some people up in front. I can't describe them accurately because you just can't. Um, just beyond, beyond, beyond awful. Entitled? Oh my God. I want to remind you that you're flying on a budget airline. Oh my God, it was bad. Um, but it was short, so there's that. So one hour, 16 minutes. Um, the plane was full, 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 like your bowels after a huge meal. <laughs> it was bad, it was bad, but it's over. Our next flight to, um, we're going to, um, RSW, Real Single Women, which is Fort Myers. Uh, we have 21 passengers, so they're all going to be jerks. <laughs> I just know it. But, um, yeah. Two more legs. One of them is 21 passengers, so it can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Knock on wood. I'll see you later. Mm. I think they're trying to make us board early. We have like 24, 27, something like that passengers going to Charleston, Charlotte. I don't even know where we're going. I always mix those two up. Uh, but our flight here was uh, one hour, 24 minutes. We had 21 passengers on board. Crazy. So weird. Um, but uh, our flights are usually full, 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 full. But um, uh, yeah, very few people on this flight. Uh, it was a little bumpy coming here, but easy. It felt like a little bit of a respite from an earlier crazy town day. So we're very, very grateful for this little reprieve. Uh, it should continue for the next uh, last leg of our day. But you know, if anything crazy is going to happen, it'll be the last leg of the day. Um, yeah. Ta -da! I will see you in Charleston or Charlotte, wherever I'm sleeping tonight. I don't know. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome to Charleston. I just got in the room, took off my uniform shirt because I could not bear to have it on my body one more minute. Um, today was very long. Today was very long. We started our day um, at, uh, we had a 10 o'clock shuttle and then I just got into my room. It is 10.50, so it's been a very long day. Um, I'm going to take off all of my clothes, bum, 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 and then put clothes back on. I'm going to Waffle House with ink. I've never been to Waffle House. I'm very excited. Um, I've seen lots of drama and trauma in YouTube videos and news, you know, but I've never been to one, so I'm kind of excited. Um, the last two legs of the day, super easy. No one ordered a thing. Everyone sat where they, they, they sat, they all behaved. No problems. I just sat and read a book mostly for the past two legs, got up and did our trash walks and stuff like that. But it was super easy. I don't think I could have handled anything more after the first two legs. So I'm very grateful that was easy. Uh, let's do a quick room tour and then I have to get changed. Uh, voila. Um, I'm not sure. Is there a car theme to Charleston? I don't know. Is But these, I don't know what this is. Uh, there are two full-size beds. There's this chair over here, and I don't know if you can see the 
mystery stains on that chair. I am certainly not getting in it. But um, I like the kind of the fake brick behind the curtains over there. It's I think it's wallpaper. No, it's really brick. Oh, all right. Who doesn't love a little exposed brick? And then there's Waffle House right there. Yay. All right, so I will see you. There's the pool. I will see you shortly. Going in a Waffle House. I'm so excited. A little anxious. The waitress in the window, she just like wiped her face with her hand just like this. Huh. Can we take a tour of my breakfast? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Here's the after. <laughs> And there's where the rest of it is. Oh. oh, my belly. That was flawless. The wait staff was a little crispy, a little salty, but so was the bacon. <gasps> so good. It was $11 for all that food. It was delicious. But uh, I have eaten way too much. Uh, it is uh, quarter of 12 at night. And uh, my belly is so full. So I'm going to stay awake for a couple hours and uh, play some games, hang out, chill, watch some YouTube videos, and let my belly kind of do its thing. And then uh, my shuttle tomorrow is at 12, I'm sorry, 1.45 in the afternoon. We're flying to Vegas, and then we're doing a, um, a Burbank penalty lap. Fun. So I will see you tomorrow. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So here is my lunch. It's the day after my Waffle House adventure. Um, I'm eating some chicken parm with some pasta in my uh, cutlery set that looks like it's straight out of Southwest Airlines, if you, if you get the, the colors there. I would show you what I look like right now, but I'm not wearing clothes. So we're going to skip me for the moment and just enjoy my lunch. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. So it's exactly 1.30. The alarm that I set to leave my room just went off. I set an alarm for 15 minutes before my shuttle so that I'm not the person who's showing up for the shuttle as the shuttle is supposed to be leaving. Nobody likes that person. So I don't want to be that guy. Um, but uh, just a quick, hey, how are you? Just ate my lunch. Um, yeah, I wear my birthday suit a lot on my layovers. I, it's like taking off your bra, if you know what I mean, or, or your heels after a long night of dancing. <laughs> Just get it off. Who, and no one is looking at me. Trust me. Nobody is looking at me. Um, let's see. Just have my lunch. It was delicious. Um, I have to tell you a little story about uh, the maintenance people and how the front desk responded to my complaint. I'll tell you about that later on. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised I got back to sleep. I was so frustrated. Uh, what else is going on? I think that's it. We're going to be flying to Las Vegas today, and then we're doing a Burbank turn. Happy Vlogmas Day 1. So this is going to be a trip vlog, but also the first day of Vlogmas. And what else do I want to say? Oh, I was just watching some Fly With a Guy. If you don't watch Brandon, if you like my content, you'll like his too. He's definitely more focused, though, on his flight attendant stuff than I am because I'm all over the place. He is a hustler. He, oh, man, he works so hard. He does tutoring online. He works at a store, apparently. He works full time. And that guy just, he just, he does what it takes. I am, I am lazy by comparison. But um, just watching some videos of his and Trolley Dolly today. What else? I think that's it. I should head downstairs for the shuttle rather than continue talking about other people's vlogs. All right. See you soon. All right. So uh, I did not get randomed here, but both of my coworkers did. So I have time to share with you my little story as to why I was so irritated this morning at the hotel. So, you know, I went to Waffle House last night, had a fantastic time. I stayed up for probably an hour and a half just so I didn't go to bed, like with a freshly full belly, you know, not fun. Um, 8.15, 8.30 this morning, a hammer, hammering, literal hammering, inside the elevator shaft that's not too far from my room. Hammering uh, inside the elevator shaft. So it's this echo chamber of a hammer hitting metal over and over and over again, nonstop. So um, I, I try to turn over, try to sleep, not happening. So I called downstairs to the front desk. I said, hey, how are you? Um, something's happening, like uh, some something is being worked on in the elevator shaft, because I walked down the hall to see what was going on. Uh, yeah, maintenance is fixing an, uh, an elevator. Well, 
you know, uh, we got in fairly late last night, and I know uh, there's at least a dozen crew members of my airline and American and PSA all around me. Um, and uh, it's, it's, you know, I said, there's a time for hammering in an elevator, and this isn't it. And she's like, well, maintenance comes in at 8. I'm like, it's not the time to hammer inside an elevator shaft. And, uh, well, I have to talk to my manager. Okay, but now is not a time for a hammering in an elevator shaft. And uh, it stopped immediately. Did I go right to sleep immediately? No, because I was laying in bed <laughs> seething. I was so irritated. But five minutes later, I think I was out cold. So... I did get a couple more hours of sleep, thank God, but that is my experience at the hotel. Um, so I'm gonna write a little report on our Crew Connects app, uh, but this is a new hotel for us. It's not a bad hotel, just communication wasn't ideal. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's go to Vegas, all right, and then get this day done. There was a Cinnabon in the airport. I was powerless. And then we saw a Duncan's, but our captain bought us the coffee. So very, very exciting. But I'm gonna try and inhale some of this before boarding. I don't wanna do this turn. I don't wanna do this turn. We just arrived here in Las Vegas from Charleston. Is that where we were? Um, the flight was three hours and 42 minutes. Uh, we were non-stop busy. We were busy non-stop. We were pretty full. We had a couple open seats. Uh, but just non-stop uh, service. For the most part, everyone was okay. Uh, the bathrooms were being like abused. I was almost at a point where I wanted to get on the PA system and be like, people, we all have to share these lavatories. Like we've all used public restrooms before. There's, there's a way to use one and not destroy it. It looked like ticker tape parades had happened in the bathroom. It was just paper everywhere. Urine all over the place. Oh my God. You're, I mean, all over. Um, I had, thankfully, I'm not like terrified of things like that. So I just used some alcohol and uh, tidied up, but uh, just, just abysmal, abysmal. I was on the verge of making an announcement on the PA. All oh, right. Um, yeah. So all in all, it was a fine flight. We did have some really nice passengers, some really sweet people, but uh, it was very demanding. Uh, Inc. Once again, up in front had the real troublemakers. In the back, I no problem at all. Um, we now have to do a Burbank turn, um, and then we're done. And then we're done. And I've got two and a half days off. I'm so excited. My next trip includes a fairly long Boston layover, so I'm kind of excited about that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I think I will see you next when we get back to Las Vegas. All right, see you soon, I hope. Oh my God. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to Las Vegas. Welcome back to my car, Shimi. Uh, I am done with today. I am done, done. Uh, you know, I'm always telling you how much I love my job. Today, the love was very lean. The love was very thin. The love was very conditional and um, on people's behavior and they failed me <laughs> completely. And um, I actually lost patience. I was able to keep my mouth shut for the most part, which is a huge success on my part, uh, but it was just consistent. It was pretty bad. Uh, the Probably the worst part of these last two legs were um, some coworkers of mine that were uh, non-revving. They're, they're traveling for pleasure. And uh, I don't know if there were one or two, but one of them at least, who knows better. She's been here for years. Um, treated my coworker, um, Michaela, poorly. She spoke to her in a way that was completely uncalled for by a passenger, never mind a coworker. And then later on, while I was doing uh, final, we were just tidying up the, the cabin, making sure everything was ready for landing, uh, which is when we ask you to put your bags under the seat in front of you. Well, this chick thought she was sassy uh, and um, looked at me and went, uh-huh, yeah. I'm like, excuse me, could you please put your bag under the seat in front of you? You're not, there's no dispensation because you actually are a flight attendant out of uniform. Um, please put your bag under the seat in front of you. And she's like, I didn't hear him say a final approach. 
we're doing final. Please put your bag. And she just gave me this look and this sass. There was a uh, deadheading first officer across from her. And the look on his face uh, in reaction to her behavior was like, whoa. Um, and it was just, it was uncalled for. Um, I believe our lead is going to leave a little comment with EAP. Um, rather than write a report to the company, uh, just let EAP know so that if there is a consistent behavior, uh, and she has a number of, you know, reports by uh, other flight attendants to EAP, they'll reach out to her and say, hey, you know, you might want to kind of check your behavior because there have been some comments and, you know, complaints. Uh, and if, um, <laughs> yeah. It was just bad. It was bad and completely uncalled for. Um, so that was the uh, that was the last flight. Or was it the second flight of the day? I don't know. They blend it all together. Uh, but uh, I loved my crew. Great crew. We did have good passengers today, but they were eclipsed eclipsed by misbehavior. Um, so whatever. Today was one of the rare days I just kind of didn't like what I was doing. Uh, but thankfully these days end and I no longer have to do, I can start over again all fresh. Um, I have taken a turn I did not mean to take. Um, so I think I'm going to let this video end here, uh, unfortunately on a low note, but, um, it is the first day of vlog vlogmas. So this is going to be my, my, uh, vlogmas, um, I, um, video for today and I will see you again tomorrow. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, things you'd like me to expand on that I haven't said before or that I've said before that you still aren't a hundred percent on, leave a comment under, uh, in the comment section below and I'll do my best to clarify or whatever. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Have a great night. Fly safe.